more new arrivals with Kate Humble and Adam Henson. We've had lost and found, hide and seek and battling with the elements. <laughs> we certainly have, but still the lambs keep coming. These two were born less than an hour ago. So if you want to experience the realities of lambing, you've come to the right place. This is Lambing Live. Well, here we are on a farm in Cumbria, and there's lambing galore. With me is Rachel yeah, is. Marston. Goodness me, it's all happening, isn't it? It is all happening, yeah. We've had a busy couple of weeks, and uh, particularly the last two days, yeah. So you've got lots of different breeds here. What have we got? Um, in this pen, we've got a mule, and she's got some Beltex lambs on. And then in the next pen? Next pen, we've got some Swaledales, uh, a Swaledale yow, and she's got gimmers, I mean, mules on her, mule gimmers at the air. And then different again? And this is a Beltex um, cross, and it's got Beltex lambs on, so. Well, I'm sorry we're having a slight technical problem with our live lambing live. Uh, do stay with us and we'll try and get the programme back on air as soon as possible. This is BBC Two. We're currently experiencing a technical problem with Lambing Live. Do stay with us. We're working at it to get the programme back on air as soon as possible. Too, hoping to go back to lambing live as soon as possible. We're currently experiencing a technical problem and we are working to try and remedy the situation.
many apologies, we've been experiencing a slightly technical problem with Lambing Live. I'm glad to say that we can now return to Kate and Adam. Lost that monitor again. Doesn't matter. Uh, well, this is the joy of doing live television on a farm in Cumbria in a howling gale. Uh, I'm terribly sorry, we lost sound, uh, but you didn't lose us. I'm here in the orphanage with Andrew Marston feeding some very hungry little lambs. And you may remember, if you were watching last night, that you can email in the programme. We may never be on air again, but you can still email us and we'll try and answer your questions. The email address is lamminglive at bbc.co.uk and that is exactly what 13 year old Heidi Arnold did but she didn't just email in a question she emailed in a threat she said if we wouldn't answer her question she would stop watching well Heidi this is for you what she wanted to know Andrew was <coughs> what milk you fed pet lambs like these is it just cow milk what is it uh, it's uh, special milk uh, powdered milk that we mix up and we give that to the lambs and so no we don't use cow's milk we don't use uh, milk that you buy in your supermarket it's uh, special lamb milk so it's like a like a used milk basically it's as near close as you, can, as get. you can get yeah that's right and they seem to enjoy it very much indeed they do. don't you they do. now um i don't need to tell you how bad the weather is it's been causing us all sorts of problems as you know uh, and if you watch this little bit of film you can see that last night while we were making the program uh, we were really battling with wind and rain but Andrew um, it may make it difficult for us to make television programs it was incredibly worrying for you isn't it? It is yeah I spent uh, quite a bit of the night outside in in the wind and the rain I was up at two o'clock and then at four o'clock and then at six o'clock again so every two hours just checking on the, that was the uh, sheep that expecting to lamb before too long. And um, uh, you know you're going out all that time but as you say these are tough sheep they, they're used to lambing outside they're used to difficult conditions but I mean have you had times where you've gone out and been greeted to a scene of well of carnage really? Yeah well I want to do my best this year because I can remember last year um, we tried our hardest, but yeah, we lost quite a few lambs when right. in the wind and the rain, very similar to this, although it was a little bit colder last year. And yeah, picked um, like four dead lambs up out of one field, which oh. uh, yeah, and no you don't forget things like that. No one wants to have to do that. So luckily no dead lambs this morning. No. Um, but you did decide to bring a ewe in, a Swaledale ewe in. Um, right. Why did you look at her and think, I'm going to bring her in? Um, I could say that she was uh, behind the wall, sheltering balls, so uh, pawing the ground a little bit uh, on her own, which is a uh, characteristic of a sheep that is uh, expecting to lamb. I also noticed she had a yellow spot on her back, which we, when we scanned our sheep, uh, that means they're expecting three lambs. Uh -huh. And so I thought, we should, you know, chances are they'll not be as big or strong with three, and she can't look after them as well. So I'll quickly get her in before um, before she lambs. Well, we will bring you news of that you a little bit later in the programme but again you may remember if you were watching yesterday that my very first task when I came to work with the Marstons last September was to bring the sheep off the fell, the hillsides around here where they spend most of their time. Andrew had brought them down so that they could get fattened up on the lush grass around the farm and uh, then came the time for them to return to their beloved hillsides and I got to help but not before they had a very thorough medical checkup. Most of the flock have been stuck in the fields close to the farm since they came down for breeding in October. But a let up in the snowy weather gives us a chance to return some of the Swaledales back up to the fell tops where they belong. Right girlies. I'm here. But whilst we still have the sheep in one place, I've been instructed to give the ewes a final dose of medicine. Um, what's it for? This is for fluke. For and fluke? Yep. Yeah. And is that a, it's like like a, a sort of parasite? Yeah, parasite, yeah. Andrew is following on behind, giving the ladies a pill, a mineral supplement. See, they behave so well for you. <laughs> <laughs> Look 
You can't be shy with sheep, can you? No. You've just got to, and, and the least they expect, the better. <laughs> That's right. Catch them unaware. <laughs> Come here, I'm going to do it to you, whether you like it or not. Oh, blimey, we've got the real stroppy knot then. Oh. It's quite hard work. You wouldn't think that giving a few sheep some fluke medicine would be quite so exhausting. But I don't like it very much. So it's like being in a rugby scrum. Yeah, don't look all cute at me now. Not gonna work. I'm exhausted, but now we're ready to return this flock of sheep back to the common grazing land. When we rounded up the sheep in October, I was on foot, but after some training, I'm finally let loose on a quad bike. We're going right straight up that hill, okay. just about the top of the skyline, so All right. it's a long old trip, so yeah. we're just really, really slow. Really slow, okay. All right. And uh, if there's anything that freaks me out about the terrain, I'll let you know. Yeah, that's all right. I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> Andrew likes to return the sheep to the fell at every opportunity. The five-mile climb will take time, but it's a vital part of a hill farmer's job. Rachel is bringing up the rear with her very own all-terrain vehicle. The more I see of the fells, the more I appreciate the scale of a shepherd's work around here. It's a vast area of open land without fences. So just how do you stop your sheep from scattering? Well, these sheep are hefted, which means they know which bit of the fell is their territory. They have an inbuilt, inbred knowledge of their home. And they've also learned to congregate every morning in one patch because they know it's where they'll be fed. Because otherwise, there's nothing to stop them disappearing for 10 miles in any direction. Well, that's there? right, yeah. I mean, you can look around uh, further than the eye. I can see maybe 10 miles in or uh, 20 miles in, in a certain direction, just where they play, but not where you train the shape to, to stay here, and then we can manage them better. The hope is that by feeding them at the end of the day, they won't stray too far overnight. Uh, yeah, just put it, you know, so uh, just trick more, it out yeah, like more or less that. as thinly as you can, really. Okay. For as long as you want. Do you want the whole sack? Yeah, you might as well. Done. For hundreds of years, this hefting instinct has been maintained in this way. These sheep, when they lamb, Presumably the lambs will then learn about the heft from their mothers. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. How do you feel when you stand on this patch of land? Because it's not just a bit of the fell, is it? Um, no, this isn't just a bit of the fell. This is our bit of fell. Fell that's been with the farm. Um, all, all the time the farm's been there, we've, we've had a heft of sheep there in generations before us, so it's a tradition that I'd like to, to keep that way as well. Well, they look very content to be back up here. I just hope they're here in the morning when we can <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's when your great heft theory... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might go out the window. I'll be standing here going, gosh, hefting, amazing idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if it works. And we're walking yeah. around the fell going, where are the blinking sheep? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Well, I'm with Rachel Marston in what they call the buyer, a lovely old shed, really isn't nice it? Know, yeah. Yeah. It's very blowy outside, which is why you lost my sound, unfortunately, but it's good to be back. Now, those getting up onto the hill there, onto the fell, yeah. it's wonderful, isn't it's it? It's lovely. Yeah, it is. It's really nice on a good day. It's lovely. Yeah. And you're pushing your buggy there I with am. a little Olivia. She goes everywhere. Where I go, she goes, whether she likes it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and does she like it? Well, she doesn't twine, so I presume so. She doesn't twine. What's that? Moan. 
Oh, is that a Cumbria word? Cumbrian word, Cumbrian word I think yeah. it is. <laughs> now, Andrew's out there checking around the sheep all the, all the is. time, yep. isn't he? Yep. And he was out the other night and he found a couple of lambs in a puddle. It did. Yep. And had to bring them in and put them in the hot box. Now, we've yep. got a shot of him here. He's brought them into the lambing pen and uh, he's got this amazing contraption. It's good, is that? Yeah. How does that work then? Um, it blows heat from underneath and there's little far little sections and he puts them in there and obviously he has to get them warm first and then he gives them the milk. Um, and they seem to be suckling quite well from the bottle. Yeah, they've done all right. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Now it's really important to get them warm first, isn't it? It is. Yeah, else they won't. Yeah. Well, many apologies. We are experiencing technical difficulties with Lambing Live this evening. Uh, do stay with us once again, and we hope to get back to the programme as soon as possible. Hand, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's tripped over. Yeah, it did trip over. Yeah, it did. <laughs> oh, well, he's done a good job. Now, the great story is that we've got mother and lambs in here. Why don't yep. you jump in there, yep. Rachel, I'll and just get show you us. One. She's a very... Dexterous, nimble lady. Look, there she is. <laughs> I'll Wonderful. give you that one. Yeah. That needs a bit of TLC, that one. It does. Look at the poor little thing. Let's grab its little brother yeah. or sister. This one's doing a bit better. They are, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So we'll be keeping an eye on these two little lambs, and uh, they seem to be doing well now. It's a real success story, and Andrew did a wonderful job getting them in, because if he hadn't, they'd have died. Yeah, they would have died, definitely. Yeah. Let's go over to Kate and see how she's getting on in the lambing shed. We are in the lambing shed. I'm here with Andrew Marston. We are having some problems tonight, as you've gathered. Uh, the weather really isn't on our side, so please bear with us, and I do apologise. Um, but, nonetheless, lambing goes on, whether we're on air or off it, doesn't it? It does, yeah. <laughs> um, any signs of anything showing possible lambing tendencies yet? Yeah. No, I haven't seen anything yet, Kate, but uh, get your eyes peeled. All quite quiet at the moment. <coughs> it tends to be quite a quiet time this time, and then they surprise us, don't they, at the no, last minute? They do, yeah. <laughs> yeah but there are very distinct signs of lambing, and so we've put together a little package for you, haven't we, Andrew? Um, and the first one is um, sheep doing this. Now, this is, a, this is a ewe that's tucked herself into the corner. She's by herself, and she's doing a lot of li sort of licking of her lips. Is that, that's a classic sign, isn't it? Yeah. It is, yeah, one of the earlier signs, but it is a definite sign that, uh, yeah, she's thinking about lambing. And pouring the ground, again, we've seen that both in the shed and, and outside. Uh, again, a very sort of classic thing. And this is the, is, is the sort of contractions, isn't it, when a sheep lies down and seems to be almost gazing at the stars. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that is getting nearer to birth. Yeah. And the, the, the strange thing, I think, is that um, even when they seem to be in the throes of contractions, most of the time, they're pretty silent. They might make the odd noise, but not really very, very often. Yeah, no, it's very rare that you hear um, a sheep giving birth naturally and making a noise. Um, probably because they don't want to scare, I mean, let any predators know that they're lambing. Right. So it's, it's a sort of survival instinct? I think basically. it is, yeah. Yeah, early morning's a good time and, you know, there could be foxes, badgers and various other animals around to try and steal the lambs, but uh, so a sheep needs to be quiet. Now, you may remember that Andrew brought a ewe in very early this morning from the fields because uh, she was expecting triplets and he thought that she might lamb. Uh, well, earlier today, she started showing some of those classic signs, didn't she, Andrew? She did, Pouring yep. the ground. Yep. And because she was having triplets, despite the fact that she's a swale down and they're pretty good at lambing by themselves, you thought it was a good idea for us to intervene? Yeah, that's right, yeah. When you hear you thought we'd get on and, and lamb it, uh, yeah. just make sure everything was fine. Um, so Andrew very kindly gave me my very first experience of lambing triplets. And I have to say, Andrew, she was a lovely you uh, for, for, for this first experience. They were all lined up beautifully. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it was a very straightforward <laughs> birth. Is that, is that usual with swale dales? Yes, yeah, swale dales are very good to lamb. Um, plenty of room for the lambs to, to come out. And yeah. Uh, yeah, just good mothers, very easy at birth. And you can see here's the third one, a little bit small, Andrew, and, and a little bit unwilling to take that first breath. Yeah, that's right. But uh, triplets, you always, you know, often get a smaller lamb, but uh, they're all fine and uh, doing well. 
Yeah, we did a little bit, you said, to, to do a bit of a swing, and is that just to sort of basically kick-start things? Yeah, yeah, it got quite a lot of mucus up the noses, and uh, you know, it just helps it come out that little bit easier. That's it. Okay. Well, they were lovely lambs. I was hugely proud of them. I called them Mary, Mungo and Midge, so anyone old enough might remember that programme. And here they are, in their pen, looking very sleepy and content, uh, but the sharp-eyed amongst you will say, there's only two of them. Uh, why are there only two, Andrew? Um, there's only two, because you usually take uh, one of the lambs off, a swale daily ewe, and, uh, and see if we can, possible, we'll uh, put it onto another ewe. So you'll adopt it on yeah. to a ewe that may have more milk than she's capable of, Cause, because ewes only have two teats anyway, well, exactly. don't they? Yeah, that's right. Uh, it'd make a better job of a two lambs than three. Uh, right. So it's better, it's better welfare for that lamb to be adopted on rather than stay with her with not enough milk. Definitely, especially because one was a small lamb, it's likely that that lamb will get left behind. The others will drink all the milk and that lamb wouldn't have enough. Well, we will bring you news of the adopted lamb tomorrow, but you can see how crucial it is that Andrew knows exactly how many lambs his ewes are expecting. And that is down to the magic of scanning. It's a frosty Saturday on the farm, and we've rounded up the 698 ewes that, fingers crossed, will be pregnant. Andrew and Donald are seriously worried that they've been let down by one of their blue-faced Leicester tups. The biggest disappointment, if you have a lot that don't have any lamps inside them. Yeah. I'll be quite relieved when this next four hours are over. I bet. I bet it's a nervous day. Paul Capstick has arrived with his scanning equipment. His ultrasound will show exactly how many lambs to expect. So hopefully, out of some of these, you'll get a few prize rams. Is that your...? I would like to have one prize ram here. <laughs> yeah, one of them show us. So, yeah, so I'd like to be greedy. <laughs> so first one of the morning. Paul uses a hand scanner under their bellies to count the number of lambs due. Two. Oh. <laughs> the, the relief on Andrew's face. First one scanned is a twin. Grandmother Christine is spraying a red dot on the sheep carrying twins. The children are helping out with colour coding too. One. Catherine is marking singles blue and Abigail is doing yellow dots for any triplets. A three. <laughs> All these coloured dots help to manage the flock. Ewes that are barren or having single lambs will live up on the fell, whilst those having triplets will be given more food closer to the farm. It also helps at lambing time. If a sheep has delivered one lamb, you know whether to watch out for a twin or a triplet. Two. That's a big sheep. It is a big sheep. Do you think that one's got three in it? Yeah. Let's see. Two. Oh, oh two! It's a two, Anne. Two is plenty, Abigail. Three's too many. Can I come and help you do a bit of spray? Yes. Got, you can do mine. I can do oh yours, gosh. can I? Three. 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 That's one. <laughs> Two. Paul scans around 100 ewes per hour. It's a highly skilled job. Right now, the lambs are barely the size of a walnut. See the V there? That's the lamb's body there. Cross section now, there's the heart flickering, you see? Yeah, yeah. That's, you can see the oh, that's amazing. Flickering there, can't you? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> And is it looking like a, a kind of good year for farmers up here? So far, the, the early lambs have been very heavy. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, three. Oh, that's me. Be interested to see what the later ones. Are. Yeah. Now then, one for you. Four, that one. Four! Yeah. So a four. Okay, one, what are we going to do? So you put that yeah, one. Yellow three and in. A yellow and you. Yes. Okay. Shall so I do mine first? Yep. Four. All right. Oh goodness. Um. That could be that could be the weak area. Okay. Oh, 
So we might. Paul reckons that that you there that's got four lambs that could give birth the week that we're alive. So um, we'll keep our eye on that one, won't we? Yes. Will you remember, Andrew? Yeah, I will, Kate. I'll remind you to get up at night and feed it. Feed the lambs. You'll come with me, won't you, Kathy? Yes. And me. And you. Good. I should jolly well think so too. I don't know about me. Yeah. <laughs> After four and a half hours, every sheep has been scanned and marked up. So that is the last one. What do you think, Catherine? Do you think it's been a good morning? Yeah. Do you think your dad's happy? Yeah. <laughs> Paul's been keeping a tally and has the final results. A ewe with twins is said to scan at 200%. How many, how many have you managed to do, Paul? I've how scanned many have 698 yep. at an average of 181%. That's the same as 1.8 lambs per ewe. This figure is achieved when you average things out. There are 159 with one lamb, 443 sets of twins, 69 triplets and four with quadruplets. That's a good scan. It's a good yeah. scan. Yeah, yeah no, I, uh, yes, no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, we had a good scan. The job's gone, uh, the job's gone very well. Yeah. Are you quite pleased? I am quite pleased, yes. Relieved more than pleased, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. You yeah. never know. <laughs> <laughs> It was a good day that day, it wasn't was it? It was a good day, really good Because day. everyone was quite nervous at we the beginning really of the day. We were really nervous, yeah, because the tub's not working and there was a bit of pressure on. Yeah, there yeah, was. It yeah. was. And also, an important day, an important day for Andrew to catch up that you this morning yep. and know that it had triplets. Definitely. Very important for you at some oh. unspeakable hour yes, of the this night morning. this morning. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so was. tell us what happened. Yeah, well, I came into the lambing shed this morning. Yeah. And... Um, here we are, yeah, it's moving on here. What time were you about? Oh, it was about six o'clock, something like right. that. I saw the sheep and it looked like it had one lamb. Yeah. So I thought, right, um, it's got a red spot on, so it's obviously got another one inside it. So yeah. I thought, well, I'll have to catch that, wrestle it to the ground if yeah. I can. You're quite good at uh, that, I have to say. Well, I've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't always go that smooth, you know. Yeah. And um, I checked and I thought, well, no, there's no blood there and, it, you know, she hasn't lambed So she really. had a lamb. She had a but lamb, had but it land. wasn't hers. So I thought, ah. well, I'm going to have to go and find its mother. So there we are. There's a sheep there with two, two lambs. And um, if you look at her, she's got a, a yellow smit on her, which means she's a triplet. Ah. And it had wandered off and somebody else had pinched it. So basically what had happened, she'd given birth to her first lamb. Yeah. It had wandered off, yeah. as you say, some other you had thought, oh, that's mine. Yeah. And then in the meantime, she'd had her other two lambs that's and sort right. of forgotten she'd ever had the first. Yeah, exactly. So. But it, I mean, I know it sounds daft, but is that a problem? Could you not have left that lamb with the with the you that had sort of stolen it? Wouldn't it have been no, all right? Well it, well, it would take the colstrum and obviously it's got two lambs inside it as well. Of so, course. So it'd be no good at all. Of no. course. So you put them in a pen. And is, yeah. this, the, is this the Yeah, she doesn't lamb. want to come out. She really is desperate to have a lamb. So, um, <sighs> We'll have to keep an eye on her because she's obviously coming along now. Coming think. back yeah. to land. Yeah. So you've got your three in there yeah. with mum. And uh, is it a reuni reunition that worked? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, they're all in here. Yeah, happy, I think. We just move the sheep. One, two, or three. And there three. Oh, yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. looking like actually she's bonded with them very well. She has, yeah. yeah. So uh, a, a good news that, again, shows the importance of, of scanning because it's a relatively yeah. new thing, isn't it? It is, it? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's really good for us and you can also cake your sheep accordingly as well. So Absolutely. the singles don't so get as can, much. And, uh, you can feed them to make yeah, sure yeah. each lamb does yeah. well. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much indeed. I'm well sorry. rescued yeah. at <laughs> such a horrible hour oh, of the morning. Yeah. And now let's go over to Adam who I think is in the orphanage with another little fairy tale. Well it's great that you're getting all these um, twins and triplets, loads of lambs. Yeah, plenty of lambs, yeah, and plenty of pets. Now Andrew, it takes a skilled eye, doesn't it, when you're checking around the sheep to make sure they're all mothered up, to make sure the ewes are with the lambs. What are you looking for? Yeah, um, yeah especially with the twins and the triplets, uh, they take a little bit more mothering up. We go and take the feed out to the sheep. And, uh, and then after they've all finished eating, they get muddled up there and we have to make sure that they've each got their own lambs. As time goes on, they each know their own lambs very easily, but the first few days, it takes a while before the lambs know which their mother is, you know, instant, instantly. So how often do you go around them? We go twice a day, yeah, morning and, and evening. And then any problems, you have to sort it out? That's right, yeah, yeah, try and get them mothered up sometimes. I often take the dog, dogs are good, uh, 
a good way of getting the mother dove. The mothers have more uh, instinct to get lambs uh, by the side. Now, a few days ago, we had one little lamb that you found out in the fields. Tell us, uh, tell us what was happening. You picked up this little lamb. You got it on the quad bike. That's right. Yeah, I, uh, I went all over looking for the for the mother of this lamb. I thought it was a twin to start with. I thought it had a faint mark on it, but uh, I kept looking and eventually got to Rachel and. Uh, Yep, she told me, go back and have a look in the shed. I think there might have been out of there. So that's what we did, and uh, I wasn't too confident. I thought, uh, oh, she won't know what she's on about, but there's uh, all this right, aren't there? <laughs> and uh, yeah, here we are. And it was wonderful, wasn't it? You put it in the shed, and it called for its mother, and she goes over, and, and there they are, very happy. Yeah, yeah, happy ending. So yeah, well up. Oh, it's great. It's extraordinary that it got such a long way away from the lambing shed. How do you think that happened? I've absolutely no idea. Uh, may have crept through the bars of the gate, but to go two fields away, um, yeah, mystery. Well, here it is now. Where's little um, Bo Peep, who lost her sheep? <laughs> you put a purple mark on it. There's no losing it now. No, no it's gonna, we know where it is now. <laughs> now, there's lots of farmers around the country, including me at home, who put paint spray numbers on the side of the lambs and the same number on their mothers so that you yeah. can marry them up and you know who belongs to who? But you tend not to do that. Um, no, especially with the with the meal gimmel lambs. We uh, we sell them in the September, and if we put big big marks on them, it tends to stay on the fleece quite a lot. And uh, and then when you're matching them up, it uh, it spoils the look of the sheep because some have red marks, some have blue, and so that's one of the reasons why. I, I just don't like the look of the big marks when uh, when I'm looking at my sheep. Oh, I don't blame you. I, mean, I must say, when you do see those mule lambs in the markets, and they do look beautiful, presentation's key, isn't it? It is, yeah. A lot of time and effort goes into goes spent uh, doing the best you can for your mule givers. A lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, we've been following the Marston family, and last winter it was pretty hard for their animals and for them as the snows came early. Take a look at this. It's the end of November, and like much of the country, it looks like we've been snowed in. The farm drive is completely iced up, so Andrew has to give me a rather unusual lift to work. But our daughters Catherine and Abigail are in luck when they hear that school's closed. Little rascal! For the two-month-old sheepdog puppies, this is their very first taste of snow. <laughs> This is also the first winter on the farm for the girl's new pony, Blaze. Blaze! Blaze! Come on, As a Dale's cross fell, he should be made for the cold. Blaze, cross! Blaze! Blaze is doing okay, I think. I think he's a bit hungry as well. But it's not just the horse that needs feeding. Now all the grass is covered. <laughs> Helping out on the farm in the snow is still a novelty for the girls. But this early Arctic blast is not such fun for everyone. The snow's uh, come big style. Uh, it's a while since we've had this much snow before. This, this time of year especially. The yow should be in lamb, so we need to give them plenty of food. It's crucial to get uh, to get the feed into the sheep as a knock-on effect right through to lambing. If, if your sheep get down in condition this time of year, the lamb with next to no milk, the lambs will be small and poor, and a combination of everything just, just is a disastrous lambing time. With no grass so early on in winter, the sheep quickly chomp their way through our feed supplies. Really, this bill should be lasting them three days but they're so hungry I brought them one yesterday and uh, they need another one today but they're no good without it but it's stays like this going to be an expensive winter but once you start feeding the sheep they come to rely on it throughout winter we're hoping that we can keep yeah condition on them but if it carries on for much longer uh, yeah we're wondering uh, how long it's going to last for and it, what what is the knock-on effect We have to get some feed wagons in today, tomorrow, 
because we're out of feed and if you don't grit it if the wagon starts to come down here the chances are it'll start to slide it could slide into the house or slide into anywhere and also once it gets into the yard unless we have it gritted we're not getting back out again we will have to find some more grit somewhere Donald has seen many winters on the farm but this one looks like it's going to be a tough one Thankfully we get the feed truck down to the yard so we can fill up our stores. But getting it out proves much trickier. Time for Andrew's trusty tractor to come to the rescue. Winter has come early and it's only the start of things to come. It did feel that that snow was never going to go, didn't it? It did, because it started so early, yeah. that was the thing. Yeah. Last winter was hard, but this winter it started earlier, and so it made it a long winter. And also, <coughs> I suppose, for all farmers, um, you, you know that you're going to have to feed your animals at some stage in the winter, but did it mean that you had to start feeding a lot earlier than you planned to, and budgeted to? Uh, yes, we did have to start feeding much earlier than we expected, and uh, we were conscious that we were going to not a crop. Yeah. Uh, we are relieved that it's lasted as well as it has, but we were giving them far more then than what we normally give them in November. But you've got to feed them. Of course you I have. mean, you make a lambing time in winter, and if you hadn't fed them, you'd have been having a pretty miserable lambing time. Yeah. So you've got to keep flesh on them. But, uh, um, I mean, do, is it reflected then later? I mean, you know, all sheep farmers will have gone through the same thing this winter. Everyone mm. will have had spiralling feed <coughs> costs. Is that then reflected in the costs of the lamb at market later, whether they're being sold for meat or indeed for breeding? No, not, not, not really. The only thing that makes lambs dear is shortage of lambs. Right. Any other commodity. You add up what it costs to, to make or manufacture, and then you put your price on your product. With a lamb, just because it's cost five more, five pound a head more to rear them this winter, doesn't mean that you'll get five pound a head more at the back end when you sell them. So it's you just, w really bear the brunt, unless, as you say, it happens to be a year when lamb prices are high. Yeah, I mean that, that, that's farming, and uh, you know, some some years it's good, some years bad, and uh, if we've got extra costs, then there's less profit. Well, that brings me very neatly to one of our viewers' questions. Uh, this man, Alan Cookson, emailed us on lambinglive at bbc.co.uk, and you can too. And he said, what, Donald, would you be if you weren't a farmer? First of all, I'm relieved somebody was watching last night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I wasted my school days, now I regret it, but uh, I couldn't do anything else because I've been brought up farming, uh, so I'd probably be, if I wasn't a farmer, I'd probably be uh, wealthy and miserable. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent answer. I've got another one as well from Julian McKenzie, who was fascinated by the Beltex, your favourite oh, breed right. of sheep, yes, yeah. um, and she wants to know its origin. Well. I've, I've done a bit of research because uh, I thought somebody might want to know that. Tom, the man called Tom Ashford, I think his name was, I might get the particulars wrong, he was the first importer of Belgium from Lawn Farm. He was the first importer of Belgian blue cattle and uh, he went out there and saw these sheep and thought, he knew nothing about sheep, so I think he took a Dr. Mike Tempest, who was a lecturer in Agricultural College, and they went to look at these uh, sheep and they brought a few back in 1989, I think it was, and there was eight people purchased some of these or bought some of these sheep. And uh, in 1990, the Beltex Society was formed in this country uh, of those eight members. Now, 21 years later, I think there are 570 members. So it's still quite a specialist sheep, but it is, it is a breed in its own right. It is. But it's a, a Texel type breed yeah. that comes from Belgium. Yeah, Hence in Belgium, the name Beltex. In Belgium, they don't call them Beltex, they call them Texel. But they get to this country and to differentiate between the Texel, which is a noble sheep, and some people prefer it. It's a bigger sheep, but uh, the Beltex is small and more chunky, and so they gave it the name Beltex, which I can understand from Belgium and the Texel and Beltex. It, it makes, it perfect, makes perfect, perfect sense. sense. Now, I need to pick your day, brains. Donald. I haven't got any. <laughs> You've got enough. Thank um, you. As we keep saying, as we're going on and on about the weather, English obsession, obviously, but you go out very early in the morning, don't you, as does Andrew, yes. to check all the sheep to make.
But I'm sorry, we're having a technical problem this evening with Lambing Live. This is BBC Two. Do stay with us and we'll try and get the programme back on air for you. BBC Two, many apologies. We're having a slight technical problem this evening with Lambing Live. We're working on the situation, hoping to get the programme back on air as soon as possible. BBC Two. We're working on the situation. We're currently having a technical problem with Lambing Live. It seems the weather has been giving the technical crew some difficulties, so stay with us We're trying to remedy the situation and hopefully we'll be able to go back to the farm in Cumbria. This, this is BBC Two, hoping to go back to Lambing Live as soon as possible. Do stay with us here on BBC Two. As I've um, said a few times, we're having a little technical problem with Lambing Live this evening. Stick with us, we are working on the situation and hopefully we'll be able to go back to Cumbria and see more of the action from the farm. BBC Two, many apologies. Uh, unfortunately, we can't return to Lambing Live at the moment, but in the meantime, uh, while we try and sort the situation out, we're going to bring you a coast. Well, I'm very sorry. We're having a technical problem with our coast program at the moment. We're hoping to get back to Lambing Live as soon as possible. Uh, but in the meantime, do stick with us here on BBC Two.
Well, I'm sorry for the problems that we're experiencing this evening on BBC Two. Once again, do stay with us and we'll hopefully get something back on air for your viewing pleasure as soon as possible. having quite a night of it here on BBC Two. Many apologies for that. We are working on the situation and hopefully we'll be able to go back to lambing live as soon as possible. BBC Two, do stay with us. Once again, we are working on the situation. We're currently having a technical problem with Lambing Live. Understandably, it is a live program. They are having a few difficulties with the weather. So hopefully, they'll be back with us soon. Well, good news now here on BBC Two. Thank you for staying with us. I'm getting the information that we can now go back to Lambing Live. There we go, stand by. What did you say right at the beginning of the opening of the show? We've been battling the elements. We didn't realise we were going to be battling them quite this much. I'm so sorry, but we are back. We'll make the most of being back uh, and try and answer some of your questions, which you've been sending on, on uh, sending in on Lambing Live at bbc.co.uk. And I love this first one. It's from Stephen Atkinson. He says, when is Adam going to get his hands dirty? Yes. You know what they say? Dress smart, think smart. <laughs> Dress smelly and you are smelly. <laughs> This woman so, does not. She does get so stuck in, mean. but she gets it all over. All right, all right. <laughs> this, uh, okay, Becky, age nine, wants to know how long before a lamb eats solid food, and are lambs born with any teeth? Hold that. Okay. There we go. Now then, let's get little Bo Peep. Yeah. And if I can show you, they're not born with any teeth. There we go. Oh, you can see oh, that. Look at that. So well, they, they sort just of look like teeth. They do come through quite quickly. Right. And it's really, as soon as you put them outside, they start nibbling the grass. Yeah. And then they will get onto solid food a little bit later on. And some people will feed pet lambs creep pellets, little tiny nuts. And they'll we did start... that with Humble, actually, last year, because she didn't really like these. She didn't like anything normal, did she? And they'll nibble on those quite quickly. Well, yeah. well, well, there you are, Becky. I hope that answers your question. Um, now, uh, Keith Williamson, <laughs> he's responding to what you said. Said, which was that um, a lamb, a, a ram mates with a hundred ewes. You said this last night. How does it take? Uh, how, how long, long does, does it that take, take the ram? Yes. Well, the actual mating process is pretty quick, but yeah. he has quite a long time to serve all a hundred ewes. Mm. And in fact, a ewe cycle is about eighteen days, and you'll leave the ram in for generally two or three cycles, so virtually a couple of months. Really? Okay. And and that's why it's important as well to to re rattle tups, isn't it? So that you can see exactly how they're working and which ewes they've managed to successfully cover and which ones they haven't. Then you know when, roughly when the ewes are going to give birth, but also if all the ewes are going the colours of the rainbow, then you may have an infertile ram, which was the problem that the Marstons had. Absolutely, or thought they had, although thought it, had, it seems, seems to be okay. Seems to be okay. Now lots and lots of people, and I'm sorry I haven't got time to name you all, but a lot of people are fascinated by this lambing season. I mean, you know, people have said could we do you know pig live or cow live and and the answer is that lambing is quite specific although it's spread over say january to april why is that can you explain it that
That's right. Well, see, sheep are seasonal animals, so they come into season, they'll accept the ram in the autumn when the day length gets shorter. So the ma rams will mate with them then. And then they'll give birth five months later. That's the gestation period of a sheep from mating to birth, five mm -hmm. months. So they'll give birth in the spring when the grass starts to grow. Now in Devon, they start lambing at Christmas. And in Scotland, they lamb in May. Wow. And it really depends on the temperature and the graf grass length and those sorts of things. But the farmer can sort of control when the lambs come, can't he? Because you don't tend to keep tups and ewes together all year round. No, you don't. You, tend, you do tend to separate them. And you can really plan it so you can put your rams in December or November or October and then work out when you want your lambs to be born, depending on your farm and the topography and how much grass you've got. So um, the Bevans, as I say, they felt safer about lambing earlier in the year, sort of February and early March, because they're a bit lower than here. Marsons obviously prefer their sheep to lamb a little bit later in the year when it's warm and sunny and a balmy spring <laughs> April day. And the guys in Scotland will be lambing next month. Right. Very sensible. Right, very, very <laughs> sensible. Uh, now, can a sheep have four or more lambs? Lots of people have asked that. They can, yes. I mean, here they've got singles, twins, triplets and quads, but I've had some at home that have had five or even six. That's a litter. It is. It's uh, a lot of lambs. What I mean, what on earth do you do? Because again, you know, we know now that ewes only have two teats. Some ewes might have enough milk to support three lambs, but what on earth do you do with six? Well, you've got to take them off. I mean, often they're born very tiny and yeah. it's difficult to keep them alive and you need to bottle feed them and look after them. And ideally you want a ewe to have twins, you know, and it's particularly in a lowland situation. Up on the fells, really, one ewe per ewe is, is good enough. Yeah. Um, but really, more than two is often trouble and six is far too many. It just means a lot of tender loving care and nurturing to keep them all alive and look after them. When your you, I was going to say when you had six lambs, but that really would be a miracle. <laughs> when your new you had six lambs, did all of them survive? They did, and it That's was amazing. it was amazing. And they were actually reasonable size, and we adopted some on on to other ewes, and then we kept some as pet lambs. That's incredible. Well, thank you very much indeed, and keep your questions coming in. Test that Henson brain. <laughs> Lambing live at bbc.co.uk. Now. Everybody has to look after livestock 365 days of the year, and that includes Christmas. And this is what the Marston's Christmas was like. Christmas is fast approaching, but there's no let up in the farm work as we're gripped by the big freeze. We're just feeding the cows and uh, then we're going to start feeding the sheep. The weather's snowy again and it's uh, an ongoing thing uh, just to feed the sheep really and the cattle as much as we can and uh, takes the main part of the day up at the moment. I'm not a big fan of the snow really but uh, having said that I don't like wind and rain. I prefer snow to wind and rain. Uh, yeah, wind and rain for sheep is just the worst possible thing. Uh, at least when it's like this, the, the, the stay are fairly warm and, and fairly dry really, where the, the rain gets into the place and, uh, and then the wind and it's, you know, it's you know, sort of starvation. Like ourselves, if, it's, uh, if you're warm and dry you're alright, once you get wet it's horrible, isn't it? Inside, the girls are kept busy making Christmas decorations with Gran. Are you stuck? <laughs> Are you stuck? Oh well, it doesn't matter, you're not stuck really. That one. That one. Or that one. Or that one. Oh, the red, red one. one. <laughs> well, it's going to be the red one, isn't it? Andrew has finally found time to bring in a tree for the girls to decorate. That's very good, Catherine. Are you going to put it on the tray oh, somewhere? Yeah. Outside, the snow is getting deeper and it brings with it the risk of snow drifts. If it's windy, obviously the sheep lay behind the walls to get shelter. 
But then if you get the drift in, they can get buried in the snow. But sometimes dogs can scent them under the snow. Or sometimes we've gone with long sticks and prodded behind the walls. And, you know, see if you feel a sheep. And in this weather, it's not just food that the animals need a hand with. You see them biting the snow, don't you? So they're going to get a bit of... They'll probably have to drink a lot, eat a lot of snow, won't they, to fill the cell. Christmas was extremely cold, getting down to minus 14, freezing up our water pipes. But we were determined to make the best of it. Oh, wow, it's a sheep. Oh, it's a butt of toasting. Oh, that is Thank lovely. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't expect anything at all. In the days after Christmas, the snow finally melts, giving us a chance to round up our flock. As we do so, we get to see the Cumbrian Mountain Express steam right through our farm. This one-off winter special attracts train spotters as the engine makes its way up to the highest railway summit in England. We hope that our sheep will also make it back up the fell now that the ice has cleared. Andrew's just giving the sheep um, an injection for um, scab, just a pre precaution because they're going to go back up on the fell before long. It's a bit later than what I would like, but because of the weather being like it has been, we haven't been able to send them back up. So, so we'll give them a jab and then we'll send, send them back up. Unlike Andrew, it seems the girls are already missing the snow. <laughs> what have you been doing? Where have you been to? Up the valley. Right, so what were you doing up the valley? I uh, went sliding on the bottom on ice. Turn around. Can we just put you in the washing machine? No. Mm. Like the girls, I've got a bit of a soft spot for the snow. And I think even our hardest sheep prefer it to mud, wind and rain. Well, Christmas. A special time. Bit of family bonding, Andrew. Yeah, well, it is a bit, and then the time I've fed me sheep and made the dinner and back out to feed me sheep and that's my day gone. <laughs> that was it. That was Christmas. Goodness yeah. me. Now, what do you reckon for tonight? Are you going to be busy? I'm hoping not. Quiet night would be nice. But it does uh, look fairly quiet, doesn't it? It does. It doesn't look quiet outside, though. We've just heard a wall rush down, haven't we? So oh, I know. Dry so warning for you two tomorrow. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh, my goodness, we're going to be busy. Now, I would like to introduce you to my two favourite, don't let their parents hear, Marstons. This is <gasps> Catherine <laughs> and Abigail, and you're going to meet them properly tomorrow because we, you've got a film on tomorrow, haven't you? Yeah. You have. But... You know what the viewers are desperate to know, can you guess? No. How rosy the lamb is that was born last night. And I think she's right here. There she is. So this was our very, very first lambing live lamb. She's quite pretty, isn't she? Did you like the name, Rosie? Did you <laughs> approve? She was all right. Yeah, she was absolutely gorgeous. Well, we'll, of course, be catching you up. <laughs> Should we put you back with your mum? We'll be catching you up with all the latest news on tomorrow's programme. And we'll also be meeting another men uh, member of the Marston family, which is Smudge, the strongest <gasps> sheepdog <laughs> in the world. Uh, and seeing uh, Rachel's dog training prowess, something to definitely look know. forward to tomorrow. It's like a wolf. <laughs> and I'll be following my trail of wolves and following it from the sheep's back right through to the high street. Very, very exciting that will be. Now, girls, I've got a job for you. We need a sun dance. We need some good weather so that on 8 o'clock tomorrow night <laughs> it's going to be perfect. We'll see you then. Do sun dances for Bye -bye. us. Bye. Come on.